Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Here with a story that goes all the way back to 2 Samuel chapter 16. Very interesting case that came up here. And as the title of the video you know, asks, what would you do? So we are... We're going to start with verse 1. A little bit of reading tonight here. 2 Samuel chapter 16 verse 1. When David was a little past the top of the mountain, there was Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth. Now remember, Mephibosheth is one of the sons of Jonathan, and David said, you know, hey, I'm going to restore to you all the lands of your father. You're going to sit and eat at my table. And he was lame in his feet. He couldn't walk. <clears throat> so Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, met David um, while he was running away from Absalom, who met him with a couple of saddled donkeys, and on them 200 loaves of bread, 100 clusters of raisins, 100 summer fruits, and a skin of wine. And the king said to Ziba, What do you mean to do with these? So Ziba said, The donkeys are for the king's household to ride on, the bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat, and the wine for those who are faint in the wilderness to drink. And then the king said, And where is your master's son? And Ziba said to the king, Indeed, he is staying in Jerusalem. For he said, Today the house of Israel will restore the kingdom of my father to me. So the king said to Ziba, Here, all that belongs to Mephibosheth is yours. And, David, and Ziba said, I humbly bow before you that I may find favor in your sight, my lord, O king. So apparently Mephibosheth is a complete and total traitor because he sees an opportunity to usurp the kingdom from the family of David, from both Absalom and from David. So skip over to 2 Samuel 19, verse 24. Absalom is dead. David's re-entering re the city. Now Mephibosheth, the son of Saul, came down to meet the king. And he had not cared for his feet, nor trimmed his mustache, nor washed his clothes, from the day the king departed until the day he returned in peace. So it was when he had come to Jerusalem to meet the king that the king said to him, Why did you not go with me, Mephibosheth? And he answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me. For your servant said, I will saddle a donkey for myself, that I may ride on it and go to the king, because your servant is lame. And he has slandered your servant to my lord the king. But my lord the king is like the angel of God. Therefore do what is good in your eyes. For all my father's house were but dead men before my lord the king. Yet you set your servant among those who eat at your own table. Therefore what right have I still to cry out any more to the king? So the king said to him, Why do you speak any more of your matters? I have said, You and Ziba divide the land. Then Mephibosheth said to the king, Rather let him take it all, inasmuch as my lord the king has come back in peace to his own house. So Mephibosheth is not guilty. Apparently there was this giant conspiracy that Ziba launched against Mephibosheth to usurp his master, take his lands, take his place. So it's kind of a betrayal within a large betrayal. So we have the inception of betrayals here in the Bible. Blump. That was a horrible impression, I know. I don't ask for forgiveness, though, because I think that will sound hilarious um, at some point in the future. Well, at least in this video. I may decide to use it in the future. Anyway, so what would you do? The Bible doesn't give us any more evidence than that. We're given the exact same evidence that David himself heard. And in the end, since he didn't, apparently it looks like he didn't know who to believe. He didn't know where the evidence really lay. Was Ziba telling the truth? Was Mephibosheth telling the truth? So he decided to split the land evenly. Um, read back, Mephibosheth, as a descendant of Jonathan and Saul, even though he was lame, he wasn't poor. He was pretty well taken care of. So even half was probably a pretty decent chunk, but he lost of half of everything. So what would you have done in King David's shoes? Who was right? Who was wrong? This isn't something that really has a right answer, at least not that I've discovered. David chose to go straight down the middle, a more moderate path. I can't blame him for that, and I don't blame him for that. So tell me what you guys think about this in the comments below. Tell me uh, if I'm right, if David's right. Um, if you think Zebra and Mephibosheth were either one, one was guilty or one was innocent or maybe both were guilty in some way, I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. And thank you very much for watching this video. I love you. And God bless.